It's the Own You Are Eating podcast. I thought you were going to sing for us as a little intro. I'm going to come up with our little intro jingle. If you're listening and you know of a jingle or a song that you think would best suit us. But it's got to be like royalty free, right? Well, ideally, yeah. But I think you can get away with it if it's just not all the song, a portion of it. Can you? I think so. What would your intro song be? To my life? To your life. <laughs> I gotta give that some thought. <laughs> I don't know. What would yours be? You're gonna say something from Dave Matthews. No, I don't know if Dave Matthews is suitable for intro music. Maybe Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's cheesy. I like that response made me want to be sick. <laughs> well, it's better than no response. <sighs> Having said that, I actually, for some reason, I have like some kind of Mariah Carey song. Oh, yeah. Time, which is no better. That's not cheesy at all. <laughs> I don't even know why. I can't remember the last time I listened to Mariah Carey. I've never heard you listen to Mariah Carey. No, it happens sometimes in the car when I'm on my own. Rest in peace. <laughs> she died? I don't know. No. I just figured I haven't heard from her in a long time. She might have passed away. No, I no? don't think so. She's still around? <laughs> yeah. She's all right. I mean, she's, she can sing, that girl. <laughs> she can sing. She can, yeah. She's pretty good. Yeah. What's her most... She's not bad. What's her most popular song? What would I know of her? I can't think of any. I don't know why I, she sprang into my head, but because... Truthfully, all I can hear is like a Whitney Houston song going on my mind right now. But I want to dance with somebody? Yeah. So I don't know why I was thinking the right guy. She has a very, and people that are listening will I'm sure know it, but she has one really amazing song, and I can't remember what it is, that everybody knows. Oh, I will just have a little By the way, there's one in fly in our house. Google machine. This fly has moved in. It's been here all week. <laughs> <laughs> we should start charging it. Back. But it only likes to live on food and drinks I'm eating or on my shoulder. Is it Hero that you're thinking of? When a hero comes that's along. That's, that's my intro song. <laughs> oh, and, and all I want for Christmas. <laughs> oh, that is actually one of my favorites. In fact, that would be my intro song. I love Christmas. It's my you're gonna, favorite time of year. Well, Christmas. So, intro song year round? <laughs> Why not? Christmas. I dig it. It's fun. It makes people happy. What? Right. <laughs> I play the Hanukkah song on guitar year round when you're not home. Hey. So, hey. It works. Well, this week we reached out to our tribe and our lifestyle members, as well as just anyone on social media to. Yeah, I didn't know where you put that question out. I posted it in a few different spots. Turns out people are inherently lazy. <laughs> and when they read Sorry, a, listeners. <laughs> when they read something, if there's a step between answering it and they won't do it. In other words, hey guys, we want your questions, but you have to email them to us. Oh. Not gonna do it. Right. Whereas if they can just DM you in Instagram, you'll get it. Or on the question on the Facebook page, like right underneath the thread. Right. So two steps is too much. Wow. Gosh. I didn't realize that that's what we've come to now. That is, yeah, that's society now. Wow. Two steps. I was like genuinely One too many. concerned the other day. You know when we had that conversation about how overwhelming being on our devices was all the time? When you had a breakdown, you mean? I didn't have a breakdown. I calmly told you one morning that we needed to have a chat because our device time was becoming overwhelming. I think that's... Anyone in the world, but right. certainly, see the flies on you. <laughs> Anyone in the world, but I mean, I don't think we are unique because we run a business. Because I would say, no, I know that's 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 the realization that I had after we hit well during this conversation that we had, and you kind of pointed that out to me like, we're not unique, like, everyone is, is on their devices all the time, and I was like, wow, this is actually really concerning that people are feeling I'm sure the, the a similar level of stress and feeling overwhelmed and and just consumed by 
being on social media or being on email or whatever it is all the time. Yeah, and I want to make two points on that. One, actually three points. One, the one thing that we have working against us is even when we decide to unplug, what are you smiling at? I'm laughing. I, I'm e- laughing. Even when we decide to unplug, we need to get on our device because oftentimes it's like, well, what are we going to eat? Yeah. So we have our dessert because we usually kind of unplug at night and then whether we're watching Netflix or chilling on the couch and then it's like, well, what's for dessert? We have to look on our phone, Mm -hmm. which is then, well, is there a message? Is there this? Is there that? So maybe what we can do is write it down on a Mm post-it. But I know it's an extra step, right? Mm -hmm. Or just make it, maybe we have to prepare our dessert before it's chill time. Yeah, I don't have that problem, to be honest. Like, I... I like avoid going on Facebook at, at night. Like I see the notifications. You're doing it in bed, right before bed. No, that's me checking up with my sisters usually. But I, it doesn't bother me now. Like I'm so accustomed to seeing 54 notifications pop up on Facebook that I just, I just ignore it. My point was like, it's so overwhelming that I'm purposely avoiding email and Facebook and all that kind of stuff because now I just like, I don't care. I'd rather just be left alone. Do you know what I mean? Well, but but that's where it's hard when it's, you know, you can only avoid email so much. We have people relying on oh, us, I you know? know. And I know we'll, obviously you don't avoid that, but, but we, you wind up avoiding people like your family. Right, exactly. That's like at the end of the day when I get an email from my dad, I'm like, I don't have the energy to read another damn email. I'll tell you what it's done for me. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, family, but you're not getting a response for a week. <laughs> No, but at times it has become, hey, just call me. Right. Where you've almost come full circle. Mm. Before you didn't like to be called. Right, and now it's like, I text so much, I email so much, Dad, just call me. Mm. What do you need? (laughs) Um, But the other point I was going to make is, we listen to other podcasts, and one that we listen to is Work Life with Adam Grant. I love that podcast. I'm definitely going to listen to it. Whether you work for someone, for yourself, a company, definitely check that out. I think if you just search... Work Life, Adam Grant, Mm -hmm. you'll find it. There's only like 10 episodes, and they're really short and entertaining. Even the commercials make you feel like you're listening to the podcast still. Oh, yeah. But anyway, there was that episode on disconnecting from work. Mm -hmm. Because even corporations are making people feel attached to their phone. And I know when I own the boxes, and, and, and to some extent even today with the box I coach at, it's like, I text people at any hour, and I'm like, why the hell did you get back to me? Right. And it's like, it's one thing as a coach now, expecting the owners to get back to you, but when I was the owner, and I had coaches, and I would get mad at them for not responding to things at all sorts of hours. Yeah, that's not, that's I was not a, a part healthy of, expectation. Yeah, I was a part of the problem. But lastly, the other point I wanted to make, it was funny, if you've read our post this week on our Own Your Eating Lifestyle <laughs> membership, what are you laughing at? Jay, the taskmaster. <laughs> if, if, if you check it out at ownyoureating.com, and, and while some of the content is restricted if you're not a member, but some is open, and if you read my article this week about how I learned about quantifying quality in food, the person I talk about is Jess. Oh, Yeah. So I bring up Jess, who owns the hot yoga spot, and when I met her, she was the only teacher at her small little studio, and I told her to quit her job and make this her full-time job. Long story short, she did it. She now owns, I think, six or seven yoga studios, is opening a CrossFit affiliate. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. So, but the point is, I, I text her. I was like, did you see the article? And she's like... I saw it on Facebook, and it's in my calendar to read it later. You know, so it's like, hey, you can control it to some extent. Yeah, and that's what it's come down to, like, scheduling everything. Yeah, she's scheduled to read something on Facebook. Right. And it's like the busier you are, the more that is important in your life. Yeah, that's cool. So anyway. Did you get all your three points across? Those were all three. Those were three? Yeah, even despite your interruptions, I'm I was gonna have able to, to rewind and listen to us just to make. Do you want to? You want me to recap? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think our listeners want to recap right now. Luckily, uh, the dogs are kind of quiet this morning. It's 
because they've been up since six. Yeah, Lola. We got and Lola. Probably because they were awake in the middle of the night with our, that crazy thunderstorm. Oh, that, I was worried about them. I was too. I was scared. I was surprised that they didn't. You know what? They're howling. We we keep them in crates during the night, and they're in the laundry room, and it's such a secure little room. I bet you they felt fine. Well, I put towels over the crates to make them feel a little more. Yeah, and I think they're just, they, you know, they couldn't see it, so they probably just, they feel it more than anything. But, hey, if you're listening and you know how to make a dog stop barking at 6 a.m. She is just desperate to pee. That's all it is. I don't think so. Yes. <laughs> you <laughs> No, I don't think that's she what it is. She runs out of the house. Sometimes if I'm not quick enough to open the porch screen, so we have two doors. We have the French door, and then we have the porch screen door. If I'm not quick enough to get to that door, she'll just pee on the lanai. I've never seen her do that. She's done that a couple of times, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm literally moving as fast as I can. Mimi just happens to be in front of my feet right now. She jumps over Mimi a lot of the time. I think that's funny. Anyway. Okay, did you pick out a question, multiple questions? I did. Okay. Our listeners, our, our readers, <laughs> our followers did actually email in, which is cool. Um... At first, I was like, oh, God, now I've got to read another email. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I right. love those for you. <laughs> I know this. So we got a question from Annette. And Annette says, so she is, was... Is that her real name, or are you giving her a pseudonym? Uh, no, no, that's her real name. What if she doesn't want to be... Well, it's just Annette. And I told her that we were going to tag okay. her in the post if we respond. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Annette, we're blowing your cover here. I don't think... I don't think there's anything too okay. personal. Okay, and I haven't heard the question or read it. No. Okay, so Annette says, I was originally around 1,600 calories, working out, like doing CrossFit wads three times a week. Nothing happened, no weight loss, no shift in her body composition. She then had you or us redo her numbers, and we dropped the numbers to 1,460. Still nothing happened. So she's saying frustrated, she's feeling frustrated, too many calories, too little calories, what's going on? She's watching her numbers. I don't know if that means she's regularly hitting them, I would let's assume so. Um, <clears throat> doing CrossFit wads, doing ROM wad and yoga, walking on weekends, what am I doing wrong? What is Annette doing wrong? That's a good question. I don't think she's doing anything wrong necessarily. Mm-hmm. So let's let's dive into Annette because I think a lot of people have experienced similar frustrations and scenarios. Does she have a follow up? Well, I, I responded to let her know we got her question, and she she just said she's okay if the answer is to move faster or to move more, but she's just wondering if calories would be a factor. Well, I'd be interested to know her goal weight. Okay. I don't know if she's included that. No, but we have her macro, so we could probably figure it out. I would assume if she's trying to be, if I if I moved her down to about 1,460 calories, her goal weight's probably somewhere around 135. Uh, You're just punching numbers in the No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, correct. Okay. I was just doing math. Well, I did that math faster uh, yeah. in my head. <laughs> So well, <laughs> let's not dive into the horrific experiences that I suffered with math throughout my childhood. Okay, so now the second question would would be, which you won't be able to figure out with any calculator, where she currently is with her weight. <laughs> so there's a, you know a couple things going on, but I think the bigger picture lies in, and I think this is something if you go back and listen to the last few episodes that we've discussed, really, what do we do when we're not seeing progress? Mm -hmm. For Annette, if you're listening, and anyone that's in a similar situation or scenario, you know, a couple things that we have to dive into. Are you being consistent? Yeah, and and like I said, you know, she said that she, what did she say? Um, She's watching her numbers. So what does that mean? You're watching them, like, but you're plus or minus 20 grams every day. Are you and are you weighing and measuring, or are you like how precise are you being? Are you only weighing and measuring your protein and just guesstimating your veggies, or yeah. are you using cups? Are you using a scale? Are you how often are you eating out? All of those things, you know, and and that's really 
a lot of people will say, well, I'm really good Monday through Friday. And then the weekends, I all those things that you just mentioned, or they blow it, or they don't even track, et cetera. And then it's like, well, hey, you're doing really well 75% of the time. Mm -hmm. But the closer and closer you get to your goal weight, the more important it is that you're dialed in 100% of the time. You know, the, you know, we take Jerry, for example, who has lost well over 100 pounds and he's crushing it. And even his progress is slowing down and he still has a little bit of weight to go. But when he first started, you know, he could have been thinking about doing macros and he'd be losing weight, right. you know, but now the, the closer he's getting to his goal, weight. right. His true potential there, the more he's realized, wow, every measurement matters. Yeah, every bite counts. So, you know, those are the types of things I'd be addressing in that. Are you being accurate? Are you being consistent? Are you doing this seven days a week? Start to think about some of the smaller details. Are you drinking water? Are you, you know, you say you're exercising, you're doing CrossFit, and it sounds like you're doing plenty of exercise. You don't have to be a games athlete. You don't have to be CrossFitting five, seven times a week, you go three times a week, you do yoga once or twice, you go for a walk. I mean, that's awesome. That's more than 99.9% .9 of the world is doing. So I think it could be a couple things. Assuming everything is dialed in, everything's going well, you're doing things properly. There's a small chance we need to drop the numbers a little bit more. But I think also for a lot of people, the quick assumption is, well, I'm not losing weight, I need to eat less, when in reality, it's maybe I need to eat more. Now, the fact that we've already dropped your numbers once leads me to believe maybe we can try another small drop, but then if that didn't work, I would start to bring you up and see how that went. Mm -hmm. But I have a suspicion that we need to focus on those first things we discussed prior to that. Yeah, I think precision and accuracy is really key. Um, and then, like you said, following up with, well, am I drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, um, those kinds of things, too. Nutrition is 80% of it. You know, we've what we try to do is preach a lifestyle, and part of that lifestyle that you just touched on is sleep as well. And for, I mean, we see it in our check-ins every week. I can see people whose numbers are dialed in, the weight is moving down, over the course of the week, steady, just like I want it, a night or two of bad sleep, the weight goes up. Mm -hmm. Numbers are the same. I can tell you my weight was up this morning after being awake for however long in the middle of the night. Yes, I mean, thunderstorm. sleep and cortisol, which comes from lack of sleep or stress, is detrimental to your body. I've discussed this before, but I, I think there's more than four, but if we look at the four main factors on your overall health, nutrition, sleep, stress, and fitness. If one of those had to go, I don't have time to do all four, fitness should be the first to go. <laughs> What's, what do you, you think? You would drive me crazy. <laughs> well, my stress might go up. Right. But I, I just mean for a short period of time or in times where... Yes, I agree with that. I, I would agree with that. And there's been times where... I've been so stressed out that a coach in the past has recommended to me, like, take a break from exercise. Like, you need, your body just needs to chill out. And, you know, like, and that doesn't mean do nothing. Like, you can walk, you can do some yoga. Well, but, and that might be a better way to put it, you know, maybe when you need to be healthy, we need to put a more, bigger emphasis on nutrition, sleep, or stress where a lot of times we put the emphasis on working out. Right. You know, or when it comes to weight loss, I should say. So it's not that, hey, give one up, but it's like, hey, if we're balancing all of these, fitness is probably the least impactful on your body. Hey, Lola, if you can, grab the most noisy <laughs> toy. You're going to get that. She's not going to give me that ball. Wow. Now I'm going so anyway, while well, Roz deals with that, uh, Annette, don't talk from over there, I got it. Annette, follow up with us. We can use you for a kind of a recurring athlete over the next couple of weeks, if you'd like, while we're on the podcast. And let's, let's follow up. So if you're listening to this, we want to get 
more information. So some of the questions I want to ask you, and again, you know, we can probably look back on our records, but go ahead and email us. Your current weight, how consistent you are, are you hitting your numbers, not just consistently, but regularly. And what I mean by that is, you know, are you diligently plus or minus five on all three? And are you doing that seven days a week? Any other questions you would have for her? How's your sleep? How's your stress? No, I mean, I would like to know about the consistency of of her workouts throughout the week. You know, she says she's doing all those things. You know, how, how many days a week are you training? What are you doing specifically? So I just, I would, I'd be curious to know, you know, I think the body, the body loves to be in homeostasis. And so if you're just doing the same things in your workouts, you're not continuing to see improvements in your performance. You don't, you know, you feel like, yeah, cool, I'm doing this, I'm fit, but I'm not really progressing or improving. Um, possibly, you know, we need to address that too. Maybe there's room for a little more intensity. Yet. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, we hope that answered your question. We'll do one more question. We'll do more of a light-hearted question that we got from Tom. Okay. That's his real first name also. All right, no pseudonyms. I told people that they can ask us anything and everything. And Tom took advantage of that. Just a super simple question. He said, you guys post about all sorts of stuff. You've asked us this question, but you didn't answer it. What is your favorite movie? Um, You're going to go first, I assume. I mean, the first thing that just popped into my head... I have to go for, otherwise I could be sat here all day. I would say Sleepless in Seattle. I've heard you say that before. Yeah. I, I, two of my favorite actors. Who's that, Tom Hanks Meg Ryan? Yeah, I love them both. They're awesome. I miss that generation of movies. They're just like feel-good rom-coms that weren't super cheesy. I think that's very cheesy. No. I think... Yes, that is <laughs> my definition of cheesy is not the same as yours. I, but you know, the the ones that come out now, they I don't know. It's just a different genre. What's what's a recent rom com we've watched? Well, I suppose the one we watched last night was a rom com. Yeah, that was weird. I, I enjoyed it. it. It was slow. I really enjoyed it. If you have Netflix, it was, it was the clapper. The clapper on Netflix. It wasn't quite what I expected. I mean, I saw this all-star cast, and I thought, wow, this is going to be hilarious. And it, it wasn't. It wasn't like laugh out loud. I think it was thought-provoking. Yeah. I, I mean, they were both, the main characters are very kooky. Yeah. Which I understand uh, you uh, like. Jay always likes people who are a little off the wall. I do. I'm really intrigued by that. There they go. They're wrestling right as we're wrapping up. So I'll do my movie. It's kind of my stock answer, but I agree with you. If you think too much about your favorite movie, you can be here all day. Yeah, but there's different genres and whatever. Probably okay. The Princess Bride. Oh, my goodness. Weren't you telling the kids at CrossFit to watch that the other day? Well, yeah, I, asked, I actually asked this question to the I, I, I lead it, off each class with a question of the day, and sometimes they're super simple, like, hey, buffalo or barbecue? Barbecue. Buffalo. Or, <laughs> I don't want to People give... are going to start thinking, why are you two married? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? Right, like, if I, I'll give you an example on that one. You love barbecue chicken pizza. Yeah. I love buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, hey, you're weird. I don't know. I don't know. So... First of all, we'd love to hear your response on that one. Post it below. We're going to put this up in, on Facebook. If you're listening to this and you're on Facebook, let us know. Buffalo or barbecue or your favorite movie. But, you know, one of the questions I kicked off was a Saturday. It was a busy class. And I said, what's your favorite movie? And then, they, you know, when it got to me, I said, The Princess Bride. And one of the young girls, Chloe, who, if you check our Instagram, was wearing our Don't Eat Like an Asshole shirt. Oh, God. Her dad loved it. He got it for her. So she doesn't wear it at school. She does, does no, she has a uniform at school, so she can't wear it anyway. But she said she had never seen that, and her dad, who's really awesome, Nick, who owns two three nine flies, check them out if you like fly fishing, said they were gonna watch it that weekend. Because it's such a I mean, it's certainly suitable for a twelve year old, not like wearing a shirt that says don't eat like an asshole. Right. But 
I mean, it's just a great movie. I, I love it. I love Andre the Giant. There's I was a, gonna say, is that why you love it? Because Andre the Giant is in it. He's he's my favorite part of the movie, along with I like the Inigo um, Montoya. Which one's he? My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> oh yeah, it is funny. No, but the guy who just tries to do the like the mental mind. Oh, games. you know what his name is? Uh, I forget he, his like, name. Lists but he, yeah, that actor. I, I forget his name. But his mental mind tricks in it. I love that scene. Where he's like, or did you switch the poison? That's, so it's in front of me. That scene is so funny. Yeah. yeah. But, you know what? It's funny. I listen to another podcast that's all about like these classic old movies and the best scenes and they talk about all that it's like a bunch of comedians and they were saying like how great that guy is in the movie but if you watch it again he dies like 30 minutes into the movie right so it's very spoiler a lot oh shoot yeah well <laughs> <laughs> you probably went following along anyway a 30 year 30 year spoiler alert still st- <laughs> Still watch the movie if you haven't seen it. And then follow up with Sleepless in Seattle, because Tom Hanks never disappoints. But anyway, The Princess Bride is one of those movies they haven't remade, and they really should. Yeah. I mean, they remade Overboard. That was terrible. Which was terrible. I can't believe you made me go watch Well, that. we have movie pass. He didn't want to go watch Avengers, and he made me go watch Overboard. Overboard. When you have yeah. movie pass, you just kind of feel obligated to go to the movies, so we enjoyed it. I just enjoy the act of going to the movies. We go to the one with the lounge chairs. I was going to say, you enjoy the act of sitting in the dark in a lounger that fully reclines. Basically, you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the day, and it's acceptable. <laughs> you, you woke me up during one of those movies. You I know, I looked at you, and you were fast asleep. I was like, what? Because I know what's going to happen afterwards, you're just, or even during. You're going to start asking me questions. It's funny, my grandfather used to fall asleep wherever we were, and now that's me. Yeah. Anyway. Almost 40. You got a lot of information out there. Annette, hope we answered your question. Tom, thanks for the fun little question. Check out those movies. Annette, hit us up with those follow-up questions and answers so we can dive in a little more next week. We're going to answer a couple more questions next week as well. As always, check us out, Own Your Eating. Dot com. You can follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter. We're even on Pinterest at Own Your Eating. If you're not already in our private group on Facebook, the Own Your Eating Tribe, go search it. We'll let you in. We do a great job of getting back to questions and answers in that group as well as having an amazing support system in there. Anything you'd like to add, Roz? Go in peace. Have a great day. You say go and pee? Happy hump day. Peace. Well, they're listening to this on Thursday. Well, lucky for you, the week is almost over. Well, I appreciate your happy hump day to me. (laughs) And, um, all right, guys, have a great rest of the week, and we look forward to talking with you, chatting with you, tuning in again next week on the Own Your Eating Podcast.